I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. On this segment, we're going to talk about heart attacks. And I have the best news regarding heart attacks and heart disease for you. Still the number one killer of people in this country, uh, just above cancer. I'm going to give you the best news. But first, the bad news. Some of you may have been hearing on the news that uh, a bad gene, we're going to just call it a bad gene from here on out, has been identified. And if you have this bad gene, you have an increased risk of having a heart attack. This gene is the 9P21 gene. We're just going to call it the bad gene. If you have one copy of this bad gene, you have a 60% increased risk of heart attack. Half of us, 50% 50 of us, have one copy of this bad gene. If you have two copies of this bad gene, 9P21, you have a 200% increased risk of heart attack. Two copies. And 25% of us, one quarter of us, have two copies of this bad gene. Bummer. So half of us already have one copy. A quarter of us have two copies of this bad gene. That's, that's not good news, is it? Well, you want to know, which one am I? Do I have none, or do I have one, or do I have two? Well, this genetic testing for this particular 9P21 is not regularly done. If you want to cough up some cash and go to a specialty lab, you can have yourself tested. But the best research just came out. And I want to talk about an interview that I heard on Talk of the Nation Science Friday. It's an NPR show on Fridays. And the, um, the interviewer, Ira Flato, he interviewed Sonia Anand, and she was one of the doctors with this particular research article. And they went on discussing the details of this particular research. What they wanted to do is find out if this gene has an increased risk of heart attack. And they found, yes, it is, with the numbers that I just gave you. Then they tested healthy diets to see how successful a healthy diet would be to eliminate the increased risk. Do you follow? So even though you might have this bad gene, one copy or two copies, they wanted to see how effective good dietary choices were to eliminate that increase in risk. Here's what they found. If you eat two servings of raw vegetables a day, just two servings, you completely and totally eliminate the risk even if you have one or two copies of this bad gene. Completely eliminated. They were astounded by these findings. And it's a really good interview, by the way, on Talk of the Nation Science Friday. So it's October 14th of 2011 that this came out. So it's a very, very neat interview. You can find that online. Good, di good diets, excuse me, silence or turn off these genes. This is the news that I want to talk about with you today. As we follow along, now, a serving of vegetables in this study was just as much that fits in the palm of your hand. That's not very much. So if you eat just two servings of vegetables per day, you eliminate any increased risk of, of heart attack. It's as simple as that. Now, they don't recommend only two. They actually recommend five to six. They were correlating their findings with other studies that are out there in, in decreasing and eliminating the risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and so forth. So their recommendations are five to six servings of vegetables and fruit per day, mainly vegetables. In this study, they also said that raw vegetables were the key, but Sonia Anan said, in other studies, it was raw or cooked. So now I can give you what the best recommendations should be. The game you need to play with yourself and the game you need to play with your family is this. Every day in every meal, how can I stuff more vegetables in my, into my body and my, my children's bodies? How can I get a little more fruit? And by the way, the best fruit are berries. So if you're gonna eat fruit, try to make it berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and so forth. And if you're going to buy strawberries, make sure that they're always organic. Organic anything is, is always a good idea. Five to six servings per day, only that fits in the palm of your hand. So if you're going to do six servings per day, that's two at breakfast, two at lunch, 
to a dinner. If you do that, you eliminate any increase in risk. Now you don't have to get genetically tested, and that's what their point is in this interview. The genetic testing is not readily available, and it doesn't matter. Well, the only caveat that they were questioning is, in future research, if we tested people for their genetic, uh, to see if they had one of these bad genes, and if they had one, would that motivate people more so to make healthy food choices? And that's with a question mark. They weren't sure if that's going to be the case or not. But what they said is, right now you do not have to wait for any more research. You don't have to wait for any more money funding science. It does not have to be waited for any longer. If you think you have any genetic tendency towards heart disease and heart attack, you can make changes right now into what you do by just simply adding more vegetables and some fruit to your diet. Six servings per day, six little servings that fit in the palm of your hand. Two at breakfast, two at lunch, two at dinner. It's very simple. If you go back to Dr. Barry Sears and The Zone, he says divide your plate into thirds. Two thirds is vegetables. One third is a lean, healthy protein, specifically organic chicken, organic turkey, and certain types of fish. That's what you need to be doing. The key with this information and this study is this. Your genes don't matter. I've been talking about this for years, for you on this show and in my office to my patients. Your genetics don't matter. This and the other scientific research that's coming out regarding genes are saying it doesn't matter. You can actually change or let's say alter your genes by an effect called epigenetics. And that word means is this. The genes you have, you have. That's the end of it. You have your genes. But you can change whether a gene is turned on or turned off, and in science we call that expressed or not expressed. You can turn them on and turn them off by your decisions and your behavior. If you decide to eat more vegetables, you'll shut off the 9P21 heart attack gene. If you decide to exercise, you're going to shut off those bad genes. If you decide to not smoke, you're going to shut off the type 2 diabetes genes that you were given. If you decide to have less stress, you're going to shut off the cancer genes that you might have been given and so forth. Your genes that mom and dad gave you don't matter. What matters the most is the healthy decisions you make, and that is choosing a healthy diet, getting regular reasonable exercise, not smoking, reducing stress, getting more regular sleep, and going to a chiropractor. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Please join me again.